Oh, no. Don't tell me. They briefed Warner. What's wrong with him? Don't ask. So you got that eye oven? Tell you later. I just might hold you to that. Huh? <laughs> I'm glad the Crown Prosecution's got a job for you, lads, because I think you've got a couple of hours to kill. There's an adjourned sentence and a trial on before us. The trial's not Great. happening. Someone's leaned on the defendant. He's going to plead. Well, I wish someone would lean on our Mr. Jameson, then we could all go home. He'd get credit, though, wouldn't he? Hmm? What? Mr. Jameson. If he goes guilty, the judge won't come down on him so hard. That's your fight to the death, do you, Stephen? Just want to see him sweat. I knew I'd got some. What's that? Exhibit A. Sticky labels for counsel. He can't seem to function unless he's got them to mark up his debts. That's Exhibit A. Can't believe it's someone's face. For the ID parade, is it, sir? I am the ID parade counsel. Edward James Wren. Andrew! How's the key witness? I'm on my way to see her now. Yeah, well, if I know Angie Wade, she's going to be in a right panic. Want me to have a little word? No, thank you. Well, I only thought I could have a, a little... A senior officer, entirely independent of the main investigation, must have conduct of the ID. Yeah, yeah, I know all that. Yo, our suspect's just checking in. Terrific. You can't see him either. He's enjoying this. Now enjoys a stable home life with his common-law wife and two children aged three and five. <laughs> How can any woman enjoy a stable life with Gary Jameson? He's an animal. I didn't write it. Yeah, but you have to know what you're reading out, don't you? Hey, give me a start his last drunken disorderly. I had him for that. It was outside the afternoon pub back in May. That was just a bind over. The judge blows his top if you chuck in any BOs. I've been thinking, Sergeant. Inspector. Inspector. I just can't go through with it. It would help your own case quite considerably if you cooperated with us now. I only saw him the once. After that, it was just some letters and phone calls to say he'd fix things. But when you did see him, he was with you long enough to tell you exactly how to fiddle a loan out of the building society, wasn't he, Miss Wade? I just wanted a house, didn't I? A place of my own. Is that so terrible? I had to have somewhere for my little boy. He was getting chest infections the whole time. This man said he was a financial advisor. He'd sought out some references for me. False references. They had to be, didn't they? They weren't going to lend me the money if I let on I'd just been made redundant. So it was fraud, wasn't it? I was going to pay it back one day. I mean, my redundancy money came to 1200 But first you had to pay the gentleman who gave you the advice. Yeah. He just seemed so nice. He had a lovely smile. Even if Angela Wade does pick him out, it's not going to be enough for the CPS, is it? Could be a lever. Well, you didn't think too much of ID parades, any you, Gov? Might have their place. <laughs> you know what? He even stung her for the solicitor's fees. Dear old Lord. Told her he found some geezer who could do the conveyancing on the cheap and then charged her over the odds. Why are you so sure Redden's behind this? Because he's got his dirty little paw marks all over it. And if she doesn't pick him out? Don't even think about it. Nothing to be nervous of, lad. Oh, I'm not nervous. Just because the defence counsel's like some mad rock violo in rounds. Mm. And he could see you fancied his girlfriend. Leave it out. <laughs> we're starting. Incredible. And then we're stopping. What? David Warner's made an application for a trial within a trial. Wrangling over some legal mumbo jumbo, are they? He wants Jameson's admissions in the police car ruled as unsafe to set before the jury. See on about. According to Jameson, he was forced into making those confessions. You were out to nail him. I didn't care how you did it. Yeah, well, he would say that, wouldn't he? All this trick in the book. Yes, well, Warner thinks he's got enough to go on anyhow. What's it mean exactly, this trial within a trial? Like all the witnesses are called, or no, what? Not this time round, I'm afraid. He just wants the officers on the stand to give their evidence a good going over. Once we've opened the case, the jury goes out, the fun begins. Just so he can look like Mr. Mastermind and we look like a bunch of bent PC plods. I would advise you of your rights to have a solicitor, friend, or appropriate adult present. Look, I trust you. In that case, a colour photograph of the parade will be taken and kept on file. If I'd known, I'd have dressed up. What, like they think we duffed him up in the car, do they? 
I mean, where's the bruises? Did he have any bruises on him, Sarge? Wasn't a mark, was there, when he got to you? I have to say it was very carefully done. What? BC 363 Loxton. Shut up, will you, Phil? But are you saying, Sarge, that are you kidding you, okay? So just shut up. What time did you pass the entrance to Lassiter's den, officer? At approximately 10.45. Tell the court what you saw. As we turned the corner into Armitage Street, I saw a disturbance taking place in the entrance to Lassiter's den. I stopped the car. I saw the defendant with his hands around a man's neck and he was smashing his head against the door pillar. Uh, the man fell to the ground and the defendant then kicked him several times to the body. He then looked in our direction and started to run off. And what happened then? I attended to the injured man while PC Loxton gave chase. Just tell him what happened, that's all it takes. I seem to have lost... Co he seemed to have lost consciousness. Was it raining that night? There was a slight drizzle. Slight drizzle. Did it affect visibility? Hardly at all. And would you say that Armitage Street was well lit, officer? The street lamps provide an adequate source of illumination. Yes. Now, in your statement, you describe the assailant as tall, late twenties, with greased back hair and wearing a blue ski jacket. Yes, Your Honour. You could distinguish his greased back hair from that distance, could you? Yes. Or was it afterwards? After you had spotted my client in the crowd gathering around the complainant and knew him to have a record, was that not what identified him to you, officer, his past record? No, Your Honour. Well, you did know Mr. Jameson, however. I knew him. Yes, you had, in fact, attempted to arrest him some weeks before the alleged assault at the Half Moon pub, and he was outside on the pavement minding his own business. He wasn't minding his own business. He was urinating in a public place. <laughs> yes. It was not quite on a par with a malicious wounding, however. He was committing an offence. Yeah, I think we've established at any rate that you knew Mr. Jameson, officer. What I'm suggesting... I know what you're suggesting. <clears throat> so would you accept that a degree of prejudice existed in your attitude towards the defendant on the night of his arrest? No, Your Honour. Well, can you tell the court what my client said when cautioned? You may consult your notebook. The defendant said, you're not pinning this on me, you bastards. And yet... While being conveyed to Sun Hill Police Station, he made some very frank admissions. Yes. Surprising change of heart, wasn't it? How long is the journey from Lassiter's Den to Sun Hill? 20, 25 minutes. And on a journey lasting 20 to 25 minutes, it would appear that Mr. Jameson was otherwise oddly silent. It didn't seem odd to me. Well, according to your contemporaneous note, all he said for the whole journey was, I owed him one, I sodding fixed his face for him, the bastard. Yes. You didn't feel tempted to ask him any further questions, officer? I thought it better to wait to question him under proper interview conditions. When his solicitor was present, you mean? Yes. And when his solicitor was present, isn't it true that he made no admissions at all? He denied absolutely that he'd been Mr. Finley's assailant. He'd had time to think, hadn't he? He was still very drunk when he was in the car. And the effects had worn off when you interviewed him at... 1223? Yes, they had worn off. Isn't it the case, officer, that you attempted to persuade my client on that car journey that his interests might be better served if he were to come clean? No. In fact, if he didn't confess, things might get very unpleasant. It might be possible to arrange a little accident at the station, one of those little accidents that happen at stations when admissions are thin on the ground. Objection, Your Honour. My learned friend's inference is deeply offensive. Indeed. Mr. Warner, the court will not tolerate such inferences. I apologize, Your Honor. Let me rephrase the question. Did you say you'd arrange a little accident, officer? No. Did you promise my client that if he cooperated, he'd be home before morning? He was asked for his cooperation. No promises were made to the defendant. No promises and no threats? No. Not in so many words, anyway. 
But your threat did not take the form of words, finally, did it, officer? It was more by way of a gesture. Can you tell the court what happened when you went into the defendant's cell to inform him that you were ready to interview him? Nothing. I, uh, I informed him I was going to interview him. That was it. You did go into his cell, however. You didn't just call him from the door. Yes. No, I, yes, I went in. I really can't remember. Perhaps I can jog your memory, PC Loxton. Right, let's do a little exploratory surgery, shall we? What? I'm going to give you an exercise in sharp interview technique. Just don't cut any arteries, Gov. We ought to end up like the lads at court. Won't we? Sergeant Peters just rang in. Jameson saying he was done over. They're having a trial within a trial. Oh, no. We won't be doing any of that. Hey, Gov, why doesn't Murder want to break? Because he trusts us, Viv. Great thing. It's trust that makes the world go round. Isn't it, Mr. Reardon? So, you knew Mr. Jameson? Yes, Your Honour. And knowing him in the police sense of the word, you leapt to the conclusion that he was the assailant? I saw him climbing all over him, Mr. Finlay. Despite being behind your brother, Officer P.C. Loxton, you got a clear view, did you? I, I was behind and to the right. So nothing blocked that view, did it? No, Your Honour. Not a taxi, waiting for a fare? Not that I remember, Your Honour. No. Well, now, you've already marked on the defence plan of the area where you were when you got your first clear view of the defendant. Can you look again at that mark on the plan? You agree that that was where you were? Roughly. Oh, roughly, of course. And the second cross identifies the spot where the attack was taking place, is that right? Yes, Your Honour. Now, if I were to tell you that the shaded block just to the right of the entrance represented a waiting taxi, would you agree that it must effectively block your sight line to the incident if you were at the spot that you have marked? I just don't recall the taxi. We shall call on Mr. Pascoe to say that his taxi was parked there at the time of the incident, officer. And Mr. Pascoe was inside inquiring for a fare. All this is hypothetical until Mr. Pascoe gives evidence, Your Honour. Indeed. Mr. Warner? I was merely forewarning the officer of the presence of the taxi, Your Honour. I'm sure he stands forewarned. I suppose I could have been nearer. Oh, indeed. How much nearer? A few yards. But you've already given evidence to the effect officer that the attack had ceased a few seconds after you got out of the car. If you did not actually recognize my client until you reached the middle of the street, you cannot say for certain that it was my client who was attacking Mr. Finley. I saw him. May I put it to you, officer, that what you actually saw was my client coming to the assistance of Mr. Finley as he lay injured on the ground? No, Your Honor. I see. And you would point to my client's full and frank admissions in the car to support your view, would you? Can you tell the court what those admissions were? Mr. Jameson said, I owed him one, and I sodding fixed his face for him, the bastard. Mm-hmm. And that's all? I'm sorry? On a journey lasting 25 minutes, that's all he said? I wouldn't say it was as long as 25 minutes. Oh, wouldn't you? No, I'd say it was about 12 to 15 minutes from Armitage Street to Sunhill, depending on the lights. P.C. Loxton put it at 20 to 25. Ah, no. Well, we had a slight hold-up. Oh, did you? Yes, Your Honour. Uh, just past the corner of Lindhurst Avenue, near the children's playground, I spotted a girl having a bit of bother. I stopped the car and went to have a look. In the end, it turned out to be a bit of horseplay with a boyfriend. Can you find an account of that incident in your contemporaneous note, officer? I'm sorry? I'd like you to show us a reference to that incident in your notes. I... Yes. I don't seem to have a note of it. I see. It just didn't seem relevant. And was there anything else that didn't seem relevant? 
for example, what actually happened in that police car on the way to the station? Did you feel that the threats made to my client during the course of that journey weren't relevant either? No. No, they weren't relevant? Is that what you're saying, officer? No, I mean, no, they didn't happen. What colour jacket was Mr Finley's assailant wearing? Mr Finley's assailant, what colour jacket was he wearing? Grey, Your Honour. You're sure about that? Quite sure. Thank you, officer. That's very helpful. No more questions. I mean, we've had a positive identification of you, Eddie. Very positive identification. So do yourself a favour. Get yourself a brief. I mean, it's got to be worth a couple of hundred packets of those things in the long run. Let's face it. It was a bit of a mistake, wasn't it? Helping Angie wait to con her local building society out of a loan. You got a bit too close to her with that hundred watt smile of yours. What was it? Getting a bit desperate. Losing your touch. Did you make any other mistakes after that one, did you? Did ya? I just told him we stopped for a couple of minutes. What for? Well, we saw that kid, remember, and she was lying on the Why ground. Why did you tell him? He kept on about the journey being so long and Jameson only saying two things. Yeah, but you hadn't made a note of it, had you? It was a total cock up He just it? got me going, that's all. Nothing I said sounded right. Well, it was. I suppose so. What do you mean, I suppose so? Oh, leave it out. You're sounding like him. So, at no time, while you were attending to the suspect, making him mugs of tea and sending out for cigarettes, do you remember an officer come into Mr. Jameson's cell and relieve himself in the toilet bowl in front of him? No, Your Honor, certainly not. But then you were not actually present in the cell, were you, when the arresting officer came to collect Mr. Jameson to take him away to the interview room? No. It was P.C. Loxton who came to collect my client, was it? Yes, it was. And would you agree that such a gesture would amount to a most blatant flouting of a suspect's rights? I would indeed, if it ever happened. Oh, and are you sure that it didn't happen on this occasion, Sergeant? Mr. Jameson made no complaint to me, Your Honour. Well, not at the time, no. Possibly he was too shaken? I'm sure that no officer in my charge would ever perform such an action. No. Indeed. Now, perhaps you can just solve one mystery for us, Sergeant. According to the custody record, what was the colour of the jacket you removed from Mr. Jameson that night? Uh, blue, Your Honour. <coughs> I see. It's getting out of hand. Can you get Reardon's brief in here? Sure. Yeah. You said he didn't want a brief. No, I want it. He's signalling for something. It's the first time I've heard you no, ask for a... I've got a feeling about this. So, look, who is his brief, anyway? Well, I don't know whether that's the one from before, but that's the stuff from 85. Remember the benefit scam? Yeah, we'll give it a go. There he is. He's a she. Makes no difference anymore. I just don't like what happened in there. You think I did? I mean, that Pratt Warner running off at the mouth. He made some very serious allegations about what happened when Jameson was in my care. Yeah, and you believe Jameson, do you, Sarge? I'd like to believe you, Loxton, but just at this moment, I can't. There was a pack of lies in there, start to finish. Was it? What? I have to prove it to you, do I? I'm on trial or something. All the time. Oh, God, just because Phil fell apart on the stand. Oh, Phil did, did he? Yeah, he even got the jacket colour wrong just to help things along. Look, I'm sure it was grey. It was grey. Oh, come on, Sarge. It was down in the custody record. Don't tell me Warner's made you throw that out the window and all. From where he was standing, it was grey. That's what the streetlights would have done to it. But you weren't looking, were you? As soon as you saw it was Jameson, you had him banged to rights before you crossed the street. You mean never arrest vicious drunks with a string of past cons, do you, Sarge? Give him the benefit, do we? Pat on the shoulder. You can avoid having to pee in their cells, anyhow. The judge has thrown it out. For Warner's application. He's letting the admission stand. That's all right, then, isn't it? Must have seen it was all a pack of lies. I mean, James had no defence, did he? Not if your identification of him was correct, no. Well, the judge is saying he believes us, isn't he? Yes, well, he's famous for preferring officers' versions of things, this judge. If it had been someone else on the bench, you might not have been so lucky. Whose side's she on? You won't be called until tomorrow now. You'll have to go through the whole thing again, then. Thank you. 
Oh, well, at least it'll be for real. It was for real just now. Right, Eddie. Your brief's on the way. What? We like to do things properly at Sun Hill. Wouldn't want to deny you the benefit of her sound advice. I don't want her. She should be here any minute. I want the interview to continue. Best to hang on. It's my right to be interviewed. Ready to talk now, are you? Yeah. Right. Set a rolling. Fit, are we? Not really. Well, what happened? Excuse me. Yes, ma'am. Can I help you? I'm Elizabeth Saunders. Yes? Mr. Reardon's solicitor. Oh, yes, I'm with you now. He's in the interview room right now. I'm surprised he sent for us. We haven't heard from him for ages. We thought he must have gone to someone else. January 89, in fact. Oh, no, hang on. That was just something we did for a friend of his. Somebody weighed. Weighed? Hmm. Spot of conveyancing. Really? At the conclusion of your last interview, you didn't seem to have anything to say. Now, I asked you about your connection with Miss Angela Wade. Miss Wade has identified you as the man who helped her in a fraudulent mortgage application. We now believe that you are the man behind several other fraudulent mortgage applications. Well, I can't really help. <clears throat> Sorry? I can't hear you, Mr. Reardon. Okay. Can you speak up, Mr. Reardon? Don't Rick? hit me! <coughs> no, don't no, hit don't me. leave it! Don't hit me! Ah! Suspect began beating his head on the table and against the wall, causing an abrasion to left side of face and a cut to nose. Right, do it. I'm now terminating the interview with Edward James Reardon. Look, I just don't see the problem, don't you? There was a load of mud slinging in there and some of it stuck. Doesn't matter, does it, Sarge, about the poor sob with three cracked ribs and a face they never sold back together. He doesn't come into this, does he? No, he doesn't. Don't worry, pal. Not what it looks. Never is.